start, even though people are getting in line. I mean, uh, so when I had first kind of uh, envisioned uh, doing this meetup type thing, I thought we might get seven or eight people, like me and Jeff and a couple other people. Um, but so this is this is well beyond like my expectation of what we could kind of pull together. So so thanks for coming out and everything. Um, I think we had like 35 people or SVP, so I don't know how many, I haven't mean, counted yet how many we actually have yet, but uh, it's pretty close to that, so. Um, but, uh, you know, um, what we'll do is I don't have like a, this is not a presentation. Uh, I have like a little bit of an agenda, and then the idea was to like, as a first meeting, kind of get, get to know each other. Um, we'll go around the room real quick, just say your name. Uh, maybe where you work or um, what you're working on, um, and if you're using Angular or if you're not using Angular but you're learning it, or um, you, or well, uh, or Wesley Workman was going to come and just stand in the back and heckle me about Ember. So we, but Wesley's water heater blew out, so he's not going to be here. So if you are need, if you love Ember, you can stand in the back and heckle me about Ember. So <laughs> I'm sure he'll appreciate it. So um, first, um, this pizza is from ThoughtWorks, and um, if you want to work for ThoughtWorks, you can go to join.thoughtworks.com. Uh, Jeff is working with some ThoughtWorks folks, and um, he talked them into sponsoring, so that's Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Jeff hustled. Thanks for hustling, Jeff. And then thanks to Gaslight for hosting. They seem to be hosting a lot these days, which is awesome. We really appreciate it. Very cool. Free pizza. That's what I was told, as long as there's food. Uh, okay, so I'll start with introductions, and then there's a lot of people, so we'll just kind of go in an orderly fashion and um, keep as short as you want, or, you know, tell us all your whole life story. I don't really care, but um, I'm going to, um, and then afterwards, I'll, we'll kind of do some show of hands kind of things and get an idea of where everybody's at, um, because as we try to figure out maybe what presentations or maybe want to just do hacking or whatever, we'll try to figure out, like, where is everybody at in kind of the process of learning Angular, right? So... So I'm Mike Ball. Um, I work for a company in New York City called uh, Leela, and uh, we do e-commerce stuff. And um, we were using Ember, and then in November last year we switched over to using Angular, and it's it's been going well. Um, I'll demo uh, what we're doing. We're basically doing web components, so our e-commerce components can get uh, embedded on other people's sites. Um, it's kind of a recommendation engine type thing. Um, I've been working with Angular hands-on since then, um, not before. It's my first project. I've done some side stuff that I've used Angular for, and, and so far, so good for me. Um, so, start in the front. Chris? Sure. Uh, I'm Chris Nelson. I'm uh, here with Gaslight. Uh, I've been doing Ruby Rails development for a long time, rich front-end JavaScript development for a long time. Uh, Angular for a relatively short time, a month or so. I've also done some background in Ember, but uh, Angular seemed like a really good fit for the current project that I'm working on. And uh, if there's time, I might show a little bit of that. But uh, we've been really enjoying it. It's been very productive, and I'm really interested in what other people are doing around town with Angular and beyond around town. So I'm really excited to see this huge turnout. Hi, uh, I'm Garvin LeClaire. I work with Mike at Layla. Uh, I'm just beginning part of Angular Learning. Right now I'm doing more uh, grease in the bits in the cloud kind of stuff. And uh, once I get done with that, hopefully I'll spend some more time with Angular. Okay. You, can you talk or do you want to eat? <laughs> um, I'll, go ahead. I'll, I'll just introduce myself. My name is Randy Varmer. I've um, been in uh, healthcare, information technology, and um, I just refuse to work with a certain Epic. It's essentially the uh, the Microsoft of the of the uh, health information technology world, and it is excruciating, painful. It's basically it looks like BB, acts like BB, like it is BB, um, and uh, it has no uh, web capabilities. So I'm back to Rails. Uh, I jumped off the track and just as uh, just as 2.0 was uh, becoming the, you know, the standard so I've got I've been trying to retrain myself at 3.2 um, I used scriptaculous and uh, 
Prototype, thank you. Uh, and a little bit of jQuery. Um, so when I came back onto the scene and started running into the likes of, of uh, Ember and Backbone and, um, and Angular, et cetera, and Knockout, blah, 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 I was kind of knocked out. And uh, after spending some time looking at them, trying not to spend too much time, but get a feel for it from all, um, uh, Angular just felt the most uh, uh, opinionated. And that's what I loved about Ruby uh, and Rails. And uh, so I've been, you know, just started trying to teach myself Angular. When I started looking was about, uh, in Cincinnati, about what was going on it was about about three or four weeks ago, and there was nothing. And then all of a sudden, <coughs> someone here at Gaslight wrote an article about why I. Right? It was Joel, Joel I think. Joel, yeah. Joel, please stand up. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I, when I saw that article, I was I I can't tell you how excited I was. I thought, uh, and then and then I saw the user group happening, and I just thought, my God, this is great. That's so awesome. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. So I'm Adam with Rico Wireless. We're right down the road. Um, kind of a wireless ISP, Internet of Things. Um, build a network and allow devices to use it. Um, we are using Angular in our the next iteration of our web app. Uh, kind of manages you know, the network and things like that. So, um, but, you know, right down the road, so that's why I'm here. And, Really like using Angular. I'm Dan. I'm also from Rayco Wireless. Um, everything he said. <laughs> We've been using about six, four to six months ish. Yeah, three to about three that to six months. So okay. it's uh, pretty solid in it now. Yeah. I'm Cliff from Rayco Wireless. Mostly do back end, but I've been trying to figure out what all this Angular stuff is. Okay. So cool. I'm Trevor. I'm also from Rico Wireless. I do mostly front end. Okay. We're .NET, by the way. Okay. We're all people want to throw stuff. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jeff. I like being here. Uh, okay. I am. I'm Jeremy Garcia. I work with Pinnacle Solutions Group. Uh, I'm at Kroger right now. So we're using Angular and CMS in a fairly uh, non-standard way, which is really interesting. Package everything up as embedded content and deliver it as gadgets. Um, so this is kind of an interesting way to use Angular. Um, for mobile mostly? Uh, no. For, well, it will eventually be mobile. Well, no, we have a mobile team that deals with mobile native. So we're, we're, we're specifically about CMS. Um, so I also have been dabbling a lot with it on kind of non blocking implementation for a personal project using Node. That was really interesting. Um, and I also play with the .NET. Using it and serving up restful content from uh, Nancy, which is kind of the, the synopsis for that. So. Cool. I'm Ryan Cummins, and I'm also from Rico Wireless. Okay. Great. Um, That's great. Jay Ratcliffe, I'm with Total Quality Logistics. Um, we do .NET. We don't do anything with uh, Angular right now, but we're looking to see what we do. Okay. Yeah, I'm Cliff from uh, Cold Play okay. as well, so, so we're trying to figure whether for some of our more data intensive apps, whether we can build them with the quality. So. Okay, very cool. I'm Steve, I'm from EC Link. Uh, we do government sites and services. The <coughs> back end is .NET, and the front end of them, we're working on UIs and uh, backbone, so I'm here because I keep hearing good stuff about this. So the Saturdays, uh,
Okay. Very cool. I'm uh, Mike Maddox. I work for Cardinal Solutions. I'm at Kroger right now doing 100% Objective C iOS um, by day, and then evening more of my side stuff that I mentioned today is web development, and I've looked at pretty much all the JavaScript frameworks and then there's one that I played with a little bit. Um, I'm interested in or I'm Bobby, I'm also with Cardinal Solutions, working at Kroger with Jeff. I'm stuck on the back end doing Java, so I don't get any exposure to the angle of the work that goes on. But I'm an right. Dan Ryan, I'm a Crossroads Church, I'm a web architect there, and we're rewriting a lot of our um, site, so we're just evaluating different works. Uh -huh. I'm Ben Stafford, I work at the Free Military. Um, haven't done, not currently using any of uh, web frameworks, but I've done, I've done Backbone in the past, and so I like to keep an eye on Ember and Angular and that kind of thing. So. Jim Anders um, at Top Gun Sales Performance. Uh, we're primarily a Ruby on Rails shop, and I had the pleasure of evaluating the three major frameworks, and about six months ago chose Angular, and it's been head decent in ever since. <coughs> Uh, I'm Joel Turnbull. I work here. Yes, I, um, uh, like it talked about Angular a few months ago. And after that, I decided to kind of uh, spike out a little app that um, to Google Analytics rankings for our blog posts and merged it together with author data. He's really good at it, too. Yeah. Huh. I actually need a little balance because I can get him for <laughs> here all the time. So, good. I'm Dusty Doris. I'm a freelancer. I'm using Angular right now in a project. And I uh, evaluated Knockout before that, but I fell in love with Angular. I use Ruby on the back end, running Sumatra. I'm actually experimenting with Node, rewriting one of my apps out there. So, Play with it, see how it performs, what the differences are, and uh, I love it. Great. <laughs> so I'm uh, I'm Kevin. I work here at Gaslight, and we've been doing front end frameworks starting with back end for a long time now, and we've done quite a bit of Ember, and I still like Ember for a specific niche of apps, but we recently wrote something, or I recently wrote something Angular, really liked it for. We'll see, we'll see how it pans out in the next six months or so, but it's exciting. I'm Brian Woodward. I work for uh, Resurgent Capital Services. We do mostly .NET on the back end, and um, we tried out Knockout for a couple apps. And, um, uh, we use an Angular on one app now, so with uh, ASP.NET and VC on the back end. I'm John Huber. I'm at Resurgent Capital Services, too. Back and I recently moved out to Cincinnati. Um, <laughs> I uh, yeah, I uh, I've been following that, that for a long, arm. long time, but I walked away from it in the early 2000s to pursue my dream of music and um, finance and real estate. Uh, moved back out here. I'm looking to immerse myself in web technology. I'm currently with the Ruby on Rails study group here at Gaslight. And
favorite being Angular. And I've been helping with some open source projects on that as well. Awesome. Uh, you guys did very well. <laughs> so we have, I see, it looks like half that are using it and half that are either learning or interested in it as I kind of went through. So that's great. Um, that gives us like kind of a, a good set of people who could speak about things and people that can learn from those other folks. Um, but just to make it easy, I mean, who's, who is like, who has something in production, you know, using Angular? Okay, so we have one, two... Garvin, you count. There, you guys are working on your stuff, and then stuff that's in development, currently in development. That's more like half, okay. And then the, we'll assume the rest of people like learning. So, um, so um, you know, Angular has actually been around a long time, and we've been using it for about seven or eight months now. Um, but most of the folks I heard, you know, it's the last couple months or something. Um, so, so we have a probably a good range of people and their skill set. Um, but, um, and some people talked about this, but what other frameworks they kind of looked at. We, um, at the company I work, we actually did something in, well, we were all jQuery, like jQuery, you know, crazy. And then we went to Ember, and then um, that was kind of a little bit too much for what we were trying to do, so we switched to Angular. So, anybody else uh, switch from something else to Angular um, on a project? Okay, you. I, I evaluated back on Ember and Yeah. Okay, great. And was somebody else over here raising your hand? Yeah, we, I was going to demo something. Later, okay. But yeah, started it in Backbone because it was very, it was basically just like one complex view yeah. without any routing. So That's I figured it was a little overkill to do Ember. And then once I started looking at Angular, just as a, as a test, like ported it over and really enjoyed it. I think it's a lot better than Angular. So. And back there? Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, and Chris. Then, uh, yeah, we like Kevin said, we've done a lot of backbone, but recently on this project, I actually took the same feature and implemented it in both Ember and Angular to kind of compare. Yeah. And so I can actually show that, talk about that more. Yeah, I, I joke really about Ember because I'm good friends with Wes. I, I really don't care. <laughs> like, um, I think they both have a lot of value, and it was I mean, the same lines of code. Oh yeah. Exactly. Okay. Well, when I go from jQuery to Angular, I'm just deleting stuff like crazy. <laughs> like, I can't believe. Yesterday, uh, I did some pair programming to rewrite something in jQuery to Angular, and I, we just like just highlighting and just deleting stuff like crazy. So, so that's one of my favorite things is how it just wraps up. So, um, okay. So, and then if anybody's using Angular doesn't think they'll use it again. I guess you wouldn't be here. You'd be setting up your Angular or Ember meetup or whatever you wanted to have, so. Um, okay, so so the next thing I wanted to kind of go over is like, you know, this is a larger group than I kind of anticipated. And I thought, oh, we can do something informal, yada, yada, whatever, but this is a larger group. So just as far as like the expectations of what we want to kind of do as a community, any thoughts on like, I mean, it seems like we have a lot of people that want to learn, so maybe, maybe talks about basics and would people want hands-on things or just are they okay with presentations like tell me what your experience is and like what you kind of preferred like ways to learn like when I think of I'll give some examples like there's like the Java users group which is just month after month of like presentations they're usually large meetings like 40 people that's all that can really handle but then there's like the Android you know users group and they do they just get together and code like there's really just like Hey, just think of let's think of an idea and, and something we haven't done, and just write some code and see how it looks. So there's, there's I, I think those are the two ends of the spectrum. So so anybody have any kind of opinion? 
I mean, with the Ruby group, you know, we do a little bit of both. Oh, yeah? We start okay. The presentation, and then we group That's an evening thing. Pairs. So there's a little more time than lunch, so that, well, right? Yeah, yeah so, and but it could be an evening thing. about that. Do we keep it at lunch? Do we move it? <coughs> totally, totally, yeah, right. But, I mean, yeah, I, I think there's value in both. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'd like to see some presentations on, like, best practices and things. Okay. Uh, when I started learning Java, Discussion on on a practice, a best practice to follow. Okay. The things you should and shouldn't do. Okay. And the reasons why, and that helped a lot. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. We also well, have any kind of opinion? along those same lines. It, um, one of the things that struck me when I started playing around with Angular was uh, how far it encroached on what I used to think of as Rails territory. Uh -huh. And um, but yet there still seem to be some valid reasons to use rails i mean in, in other words in that in that in that netherland in that overlap yeah. area that um, you know you could kind of go either way right and what are what are you know what are best practices there why go is it specific from a rails or just like in general of like the server side and the client side and who Basi go, who does yeah, what basically front mm -hmm. front and back end but you know there's definitely some overlap for instance yeah. uh, you know Controllers, mm -hmm. um, my controllers and, and Ruby s seem to sort of disappear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, or they were just like, you know, um, shells or stubs. Uh, right. So, um, but it seems like it seems like you could, you know, in that area, you could push emphasis in either way, depending on what made more sense. And I'm not <clears throat> sure I really understand okay. how to, you know, Oh, figure that out. People, yeah, with their various experiences, because when Google did this, they have already on the front end. Yeah. Big servers on the back end. So as far as like uh, daytime versus evening, does anybody have like I got emails from people I can't come to daytime stuff. Probably like five or six people. Um, doesn't mean they'll come to the evening stuff. So <laughs> does it, well, a lot of people say you know I'll I'll come if you do that. But um, does anybody have like any kind of very strong preference about like. Um, Nighttime. You guys prefer the daytime stuff. You're here, <laughs> for it's one thing. It's easier for us to host in the daytime. It's right. easier for me to go. At the daytime. Yeah, yeah. Same here. I probably came a lot of evenings just because of family stuff and kids. Okay. So uh, anybody have a preference for like evening and maybe a reason why? Okay, no? Yeah? Basically, I mean, I, it just seems there's more, you know, there would be more time. Yeah, yeah, there's more time. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, so a lot more uh, chances, opportunities, uh, you yeah. know, various yeah. ideas. Right. Well, that also leads to my next question, how often would people even really want to meet? Like uh, something like JavaScript is once a month, you know, Java is once a month, Rails is once a month, right? Um, does, does this need to be once a month? Does it, you know, could we, you know, there's a lot of people learning. We could do stuff more often for the next three months and then tail off a little bit so it just is you becomes like a kind of a finite thing like we try to do like uh, three presentations or something and then it turns into like more of like just hands-on coding as people become familiar and stuff so so think about that if it's that's worth pointing out this is a bigger attendance than most of our months yeah this is yeah we might need a, a different space um, and getting space in the evening can be challenging what's that it's pretty far away from me it's far away you're downtown guy yeah 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 that's the other thing I heard was downtown versus like up north so the other thing that we discussed is definitely as a learning group getting together is good but maybe alternating and having something like a google hangout where right there's still yeah some interaction maybe not quite as good as getting together but you know you right still show stuff mm -hmm. that handles the downtown you know yeah it alleviates it don't have to go completely one way or the other and do a mixture we are yeah, they, they record stuff and stream it too, so, but in real time, yeah. We stream it real time, usually we record it. Oh, you record it and show it. Streaming it real time is right. harder. It turns out, but okay. That's cool. I, I was kind of curious, you, you, uh, you're you running a Rails class now, I, I take it. Yeah, you yeah, can probably talk about that afterwards, but yeah. Well, but I was wondering, I mean, you know, you're, it sounds like you're you're heading into the, you know, the final stretch of that. Um, did, were there any thoughts of perhaps, uh, you know, maybe the next iteration of that, doing Angular, for instance. Yeah. Is that? There's definitely some thoughts are why on how we can help so, with Angular training. Okay. So okay. if we, I mean, that's a question we wanted to ask the group here. Like, 
So we do we do this thing, and we've done it with Ember and Backbone. We also do it with Rails a little bit, but we do like a one day like intensive course where you basically build an app from start to finish. And we don't know what the price point is for that yet, but like okay, let's just say if we were to charge like a hundred bucks, say two hundred bucks for the class, <laughs> do it on Saturday for like six hours where you would like learn like basic Angular to like really complex Angular in one day. Can I get a show of hands of who would be interested in that? Seriously interested, not just like I might show up. I'm kind of hedging. Yeah. yeah. No, it's yeah. fine to hedge you. It's yeah. not a commitment. How about if it was a hundred bucks? I think I'd, my hand would go higher. Hands. <laughs> We're trying to gauge whether this is useful for us to put something together. Sure. Yeah. That's great. Cool. Thanks for doing that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. Uh, so yeah, so like between the the Google group we had, there's like 30 people, 35 people on there, and then on Meetup there was like another 20. So there might be a total of like 60 folks that had kind of shown interest um, just in Angular in general. So that's very cool. What is the Google group? There's a Google Plus. On? There's a Google Plus community I put out there, and you just can post articles, post links to Angular stuff, share. No, but that's yeah, all but, it is but, so far. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I thought you meant like a meeting. Nope, no, nope, right now there's nothing. So uh, I didn't put a, but if you look on, um, uh, I started a, a Cincy NG is the name of the, name of the group. Yes. And uh, so um, right now, I mean, we could figure out whatever to do with that. So, hey, someone put a picture on there. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, there's more guys. Yeah. That's more future. Yeah, so, so if you're not in the Google Plus group, be you know, it'd be cool if you could sign up because then it kind of keeps everybody like, you know, it's easier to keep in touch and stuff. So, so I asked like, you know, what all the stuff we want to do, but now I ask for help because I like, I, I mean, it's cool, no problem to run like a, a small group, but once you get into like the 30s, 40s, and you're talking about a lot of people and things that they want to do, um, anybody who's interested in helping out, I'd really appreciate it because there's just more stuff that can be done. Like, if you want to organize meetings put together time for like you know pair programming if you want to do a presentation um, if your company is like willing to sponsor food like that's especially awesome so <laughs> yeah like or has space you know or whatever so uh, hit me up um, I have a couple people I'm gonna talk to um, about helping me out to see if I can kind of kind of weasel some help but if you want to volunteer that's even better so <laughs> I'd really appreciate it but um, just more we can do, obviously, right? So, um, and then I actually put together a list of like goals I kind of had. Uh, first, it was just to, like, to put that Google Plus community together, just to like so we know I knew who else was doing Angular. Basically, um, I had kind of had an idea of like just doing irregular meetings, um, more like the closure and coffee type thing, just where we get together and chat. But then, like you know. 50 people signed up for stuff. So um, <laughs> uh, I want to see what people are doing with Angular. As much as I enjoy presentations and everything, I'd rather do a lot of case studies. I'd rather see like, you know, I did this. It was hard to do that. It would be great if there was an open source project to do X. Like that would be even better. Like than just like, here's how to write a directive. Like I, there's tons of videos out there on how to write directives and stuff. And you can do that in the morning. and. Um, and so I'd r right now, like for me, I want to just see what other people are using it for. So um, uh, I would be interested in any kind of shared knowledge. So if anybody has open source projects, I can put together a GitHub account and we can we can link to projects and stuff. Um, I would like to spend time like learning from others um, and any th other like kind of ancillary technologies. Like, hey, we did an Angular project with this is the back end, maybe it's Node or whatever, and it worked out really well, like, compared to other things, we do. like, whatever it might be. Like, if there's any kind of angle, you know, I'd be interested in that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, and then uh, uh, I'd really want to, like, try to stay away from overlapping with Cincy JS groups. So if anybody is like, oh, I'd like to present on some technology, I'm like, well, that's really Cincy JS territory. I don't want to, I mean, this is, like, I think we just focus on Angular-specific stuff. Um, and then, obviously, having as much help as possible. Um, uh, and then my personal goals are just meet folks and get better at Angular and learn new things and um, see if I can help out on open source projects or whatever. So um, so that's that was kind of it for me. And hopefully that overlaps with some other people's goals. Um, 
Uh, so um, we kind of covered all this stuff. So what, that's a half hour. It worked out really well. You can do some demos. I'm willing to demo um, what we do at work. Uh, Kevin said that he would show something he's worked on. Chris was willing. You can just if it's just something on the web, you can just use my laptop. Like unless uh, you want to no, show code. It's actually not. That's cool. Then you can switch out real quick. So we'll have me go. Then Kevin, you can just okay. Yeah. Anybody else want to show? You want to show? Well. Well, so we'll take like four or five minutes each and keep it real brief and just say like kind of like um, what you're doing with Angular, maybe what you're not doing with it. Like hey, this part is Angular. This part's old jQuery stuff. We're merging it together. That's one of the nice things I've found about Angular is you can kind of like just kind of slide it in there and push the other stuff out, you know, on the way. So. Um, <laughs> That's what we have been kind of doing. So we actually have, so I, I talked about my comp, the company I work for, Leela, and we build um, a recommendation engine that's uh, based on emotional intelligence. So you actually have to do like some kind of like quiz or sign up with Facebook or something. And then we like, we NSA you, like we figure out all this stuff about you. <laughs> and then, then we actually line you up with projects, uh, or uh, line you up with um, uh, um, products. So. Um, we have a director of emotional intelligence, and it's all this crazy stuff. So, um, so one of our clients is this camera company. So I'll show you. I'll show you what the hell they use it. Oh, come on. What's going on? Hello. Test environment, but yeah, I'll show you in the test environment. It's no big deal. So this is a camera company, and um, they have uh, they you know, have a hard time. Like they didn't have a recommendation or anything, so we kind of like shoehorned this kind of solution in for them. Um, but basically, the idea is that um, a user this is uh, kind of activates this widget and. So we're actually doing a web component thing. So this is their site, and they just drop a single JavaScript tag on here, and we shoehorn in this whole um, kind of like recommendation engine component. And um, uh, we collect stats about the user and stuff. So people take like this kind of little quiz, and some of these questions are a little goofy and stuff, but the idea is to get them to kind of tell all about themselves without knowing they're telling all about themselves. So I'll um, just pick a few things here randomly. Um, so as I'm going through this, I'm moving through one widget, it's like a quiz widget, and um, it's just a controller um, with some directives that kind of like show different questions. All the questions are configurable, with their answers are configurable and stuff, and there's a few jQuery components that have to be on here, like these sliders and stuff, because that's where jQuery kind of shines. Um, so I've moved through like the quiz kind of controller stuff, and I'm going to... data and so what we've done is gone we go from one web component to another so now we're out of like quiz world and we're like oh what kind of camera do you want so I'm gonna go with the I'm gonna go with a point and shoot and so we have 56 of those and I don't need it for anything specific so I'm going to get my product recommendation. So I move through like a quiz controller type thing to what we call a category controller. You pick the categories of products you want. And then an actual like product grid, which is more of a classic e-commerce type thing, um, where we show each product and details about each product. And so like our challenge is really, that's not hard to do in Angular. Like that was pretty simple to do in Angular because it's just like a bunch of controllers. They show data mostly. They collect a little bit. The hard part is the cross-origin stuff. So Angular does not do out of the box. Their HTTP provider did not provide cross-origin um, support. So we had to basically write our own HTTP provider and wrap up jQuery's um, core stuff. So that was really the biggest challenge for us. And then you get into like the second level of that is just like third-party cookie insanity and what, what browsers support that. So a lot of first-party cookie workarounds and stuff. Um, so, so Angular being here doing the view stuff is like a blessing because then you just focus on like, well, how do we talk to our server? How do we maintain state? You know, when can we use cookies and when can't we and that kind of stuff. So um, any questions about like, about this and 
you know, challenges we kind of face and stuff. Yeah. Are you using anything in particular to do persistence, or is it just jQuery fetching from? Uh, yeah, on the back end, we're Java and Mongo. Okay. So um, we're just doing RESTful services. Okay. Yeah. You're just using jQuery. Just jQuery's. Um, or the HTTP. Yeah, AJAX stuff. Yeah. Yeah. In the back. Yeah, yeah. So we have a UI guy, and he's like a jQuery ninja. And so we had like two choices. One was to like take a lot of time out of his schedule, like to get him switched over to writing Angular stuff. But then we decided no, just let him do jQuery, and he just gives us the code, and then we like turn it into a directive. So that's what we kind of the angle we kind of went for, and it's worked out real well because he's able to work really fast and iterate. And sometimes he'll just go into a controller and just drop jQuery, jQuery in there and put a comment, like right changes to a directive, right? And then we'll just come along and rewrite it, you know, when we see it. So, <laughs> is, uh, yeah, I, literally, I would usually keep, like, I, he might write 30 lines of jQuery, I'll keep two of it. So, it's crazy. Do you guys have any challenges as far as how you build your resources into the third party? Like how do you box in your, your Okay, uh, so namespacing and stuff. Right now, we're pretty, uh, since we get to work with these companies, it's pretty... I mean, our UI guy is really good at CSS, so no problems as far as CSS namespacing stuff. Um, we're using a div, but I think we're going to switch to a sourceless iframe. Um, because you can use an iframe without a source, and apparently you can talk back and forth of it, and you can, but you can drop CSS tags and so on in there, and they're all kind of like wrapped up. I'm reading a book called Third Party JavaScript that kind of explains all those, like, secret skills like that I didn't know about. That's an awesome book. Yes. I mean, before you learned about Angular, I'd go read third-party JavaScript. I mean, because it's like the nuts and bolts of like how to do crazy stuff on the internet. So anybody else have? It's a well-written book too. And if you're, if you're pretty competent with like the, the HTML and JavaScript stuff, there's parts of that you can just skim and get to like the tips and tricks type of stuff of how they do things. So you can, you can whip through that book in a pretty short amount of time. Um, it was written by the uh, two developers from Discuss. You heard Discuss? It's like embedded comment type stuff. Yeah, they 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 do it. They got it done. Yeah, they're good. Anybody else have any? Yeah, in the back. So you, oh, oh yeah. You're good. So how are you maintaining state in there? Like if the user refreshes their browser in the middle of the survey. So basically, um, we do uh, two things. Um, we do a first party cookie. Okay, and then so. We, our JavaScript fires up and we pick up a first party cookie and then since we were able to wrap up our HTTP calls we can em embed that cookie as a custom header to all our calls so we aren't even re relying on cookies anymore um, third party cookies at least so um, at first we were going to actually have our clients set up um, just a, a, another uh, domain um, and then just do, do it like a domain proxy type thing. But then we're like, you know what, this will actually work out. Okay, we'll just do the first party cookie. We'll pick it up with JavaScript because JavaScript's going first anyway. It can pick up the cookie, first party, and then just send it on every request. It's actually not that, not that hard if you have, like with Angular, I get to inject the HTTP provider that I use. So all that code is just everywhere in all my services now. So it's nice. So it worked out for us. That, Answer your question, or okay, cool. So one of the issues that at least I have is like we use a Visual Studio as our IDE, and it kind of sucks with Angular. So oh, okay. I use IntelliJ. Down I use IntelliJ yeah, it has an Angular plugin that the um, um, IntelliJ has an evangelist, John Lindquist. Yeah. He, he's okay, yeah, so he works for works for them, and so he supports their their plugin, and it it works well. So it's, it's a well well done. You can yeah, buy I saw a web webstorm. And I wasn't really like a big fan of. Yeah, webstorm is like just every, take it's away so everything sad. except for the CSS and HTML and JavaScript stuff they do. So, um, but it does it has the autocomplete, and it'll um, but it won't like if you write custom directives, it's, it's not going to go like discover those or anything like that. Like it's not magic. Maybe that's a problem. <laughs> yeah. Webstorm, like yeah. yeah. Can't yeah. find anything. I mean, it just has like the it has the built-in Angular stuff, but it's nothing better, more. It's better than community. I I've gotten the impression so far, uh, you know, in studying Angular, that um, jQuery is practically native to it, and that uh, it actually uses a um, a truncated 
Yeah. Uh, it's what's it called? JQ Lite. JQ Lite, Lite. Lite. yes. But it will use JQuery. It will use jQuery if it's there. Right. Right. So then, but I mean, if it if it if it if it's supposed to have, you know, such um, uh, such good compatibility, why I don't I guess I don't understand the kinds of problems that you. It doesn't in, that JQ Lite does not include um, <laughs> the jQuery multi-browser cross-origin request garbage you have to do, which is basically a lot of headers and onboarding, and there's all this weird stuff. Um, and jQuery just does it out of the box. It's kind of a hassle to try but, to rewrite but it. it. Isn't, it isn't but we use jQuery. We use jQuery. No, because because the thing is, is you got to boot. You got to tell jQuery when you bring up their AJAX stuff that you want to do cross-origin stuff. So we had to wrap that up just a little bit. It's not real bad, but I, I don't want to wrap it up and then have to like try to pass it to everything. With the injection, I can wrap it up one time and then just send it through as a provider to all my um, Angular controllers. That's what the, um, the dependency injection part of Angular solves for me. Okay. Anybody else have anything? So, yeah, so this was, you know, we did the, the first thing we did was this quiz type thing in Ember. And then we're like, man, we're going to have all these components and we're going to have to bootstrap them on somebody else's site. It's going to take a minute for this thing to load up and stuff. And Angular is like that, so it's nice, yeah. Um, so it's good. I mean, uh, our, our stuff to bring up Angular is literally like, here's the code. Um, we basically just like, we, we have our DOM element and when it's ready, um, we can just set some options and, and tell Angular to bootstrap it and the controllers bind to it and we're, we're done. So... It's pretty simple um, to bootstrap that stuff up on a third-party site. Cool. All right. All right. Who want you want to go next? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So um, the problem that we had was uh, we wanted to do. Uh, so we, we host this QC Merge conference, and we wanted to do this thing where you have the tweet wall going on the projector in between speakers. So when someone tweets with the QC Merge hashtag. Uh, their tweet goes up on the projector and there's a few solutions out there but pretty much everything is in flash and they look like crap and they're not customizable and so we were like well we can do this in HTML so let's let's just do it that way and we started off using uh, it was actually Chris Moore here just like grabbed Impress.js which is like a slide thing for doing like slideshow animation stuff and so he just he just did that and like piped in some tweets and that worked good for the first little bit but we couldn't dynamically fetch more tweets and like put them in there it was kind of like once it bootstrapped it was done so we rewrote it uh, originally in backbone and I'll show you what it is uh, to all of these. okay so you go to this thing and it's called twallaby twallaby.com you can go there and then you can search for something like uh, I don't know Cincinnati web tech oh, actually one's here uh, Cincinnati Web Tech Drink Up. So this this thing like flies around and it basically searches for all your tweets and like shows them up on on the thing and then you can put sponsors in the middle and do that sort of thing. So uh, we originally did it in Backbone just because it was very like UI heavy and I thought that that would be a good thing for Backbone. Um, and then we ended up switching out to Angular, and Angular was really nice because one of the one of the toughest things to do with this is that you have to do the uh, we're doing like tra CSS transforms to do this three dimensional stuff, and it can actually go three D. I just made them in a circle for now, but it can actually do like three dimensional and fly through the tweets and stuff. Um, but to do that cross browser is kind of hard. So when I did the backbone implementation, I had to like write my own like sniffer to figure out, basically do what Modernizer does, so like figure out what browser you're in and then apply the appropriate vendor prefixes and some browsers do transforms a little bit differently than others. So it's really hard to like write that and it turns out that Angular just totally does it. You just say ng style is this huge transform string and it just like does the cross browser stuff which was huge because that like, I mean that was the biggest part of doing this in Backbone and Angular just does it. So, so yeah. It still needs a still needs some work. We're doing we use this thing called ng collection, which is just like an a, array proxy to like hold a bunch of stuff and you can add things to it, get random things, and then I extend that to put I put like a fetch method which basically just pulls our backend for new tweets and the tweets it's pretty cool like when new tweets come in the kind of whole thing shuffles and the new ones go in. A lot of that is just browser CSS transform so coolness. Extend, so you're using 
Mm, well, ng, trans, ng, ng collection has an extend method on it. Okay. So you can just, so I have one provider, I'm trying to get this lingo down, but I have like the, I have my like collection provider which takes ng collection and then extends that and returns that. And so then in all my other collection factories, I just use my provider. It's extended with that fetch method, so. Yeah, you can go to this and uh, we, we're actually selling it. So if you want to remove the Built by Gaslight logo and put your own logo in there and like change the background stuff, well, we haven't figured that out yet, but, but you can go and pay and you just get to use this. So if you're, if you're doing a conference or a meetup thing, you can go to twallaby.com is what it is. Yeah? What version of Angular are you using? Uh, the beta one, one five. I think 115, yeah. That's, yeah, we had to use that for the ng-style directive because uh, the one doesn't have it. And we all, I also found out that you have to have jQuery for it to do the cross-browser transform stuff because it relies on jQuery's internals to figure that stuff out. So, Cool. That's it. Do you want to show stuff on my laptop? Sure. Okay. Then Chris, you can switch out after him. Sure. Thanks. By the way, breakup is Thursday. I love it. All right. So, I have to... So our problem was we have um, a whole bunch of people and different companies in our building. There we go. I'm, it's it's going to look terrible. <laughs> you messed up the fix that, <laughs> And we had to do... Um, something to get people in. Did I spell that right? Yeah, to get people in and get them where they needed to be. So this started out as a Rails app and pure server side, and it doesn't scale very well when you're displaying it. Um, it's on two 47 inch touch panels in our lobby, and it just performed poorly as a server side app. And this was right at the end of. Um, my evaluation of the three frameworks between Backbone, Ember, and Angular, and um, I sat down in really a weekend and rewrote this in Angular, and it just it performs great. Our people come in, uh, a lot of people come and they have to catch flights, <coughs> so we give them Google Map traffic to um, to the different airports, and they can check the different routes. They can check which, they can um, switch between CVG and DAY. And then we have weather, which again, the CSS, for whatever reason, when you show it in a browser like this, looks weird. Um, and then our internal directory, so all the different companies that are in the company, or in the, in the building, you can find the person you want. If they have an extension, give them a call. We're eventually going to do some kind of a click to dial. So you just click the person's name and your cell phone rings and it's that person. So when we get to that, we'll, that'll be kind of cool. And then at least for us, for right now, you can uh, click on that person and it'll show you which area of the building they're located in. How and then. Is that, uh, is that an SPG? Are you highlighting that? Uh, it's an SVG, and then basically, because I know the dimensions when it's displayed on the screen, I have a uh, location provider or location service that I'm just basically setting the X and Y, and then using uh, using an NG class to set the class for the animations and things like that. And then be again, we have a bunch of people from out of town and stupid map is down there but we're using um, Google location or what is it the nearby I forget what 
API that is that Google offers, but they can check restaurants. And there's another little table down the below that shows the uh, <coughs> their hours, whether they're open or closed, and gives you the phone number. We've got restaurants, hotels, shopping. And then flights. So we're pulling in flight data so they can check the status of their flight before they leave to go to the airport. And then again, the building map, if they just want to see the building, you know, how do I get to the restroom or how do I find a drinking fountain or something like that. So the front end is pure angular and then the back end is still um, all rails and server side. What and then the, uh, what browser is it running on? Um, one's Firefox, one's Chrome because we're still trying to figure out which one's best for the touch events and for the uh, the kiosk mode. So you've got a computer that's... Yeah, we've got um, one of our other businesses, we do digital signage. So like when you go to McDonald's and you see the, the digital menu boards, mm -hmm. and those are all driven from just little mini computers, basically. And they're running, uh, yeah, just Atom processors with a gig of RAM and uh, I think 1204 Ubuntu desktop. And it runs this application great. And then we've got several other big apps in the works that are all going to be Angular on the front end. Say it runs the application. You're running the Rails app locally on that little app. No. The, the Rails app itself is running on Heroku. And then it's just serving the JavaScript. So you just hit that URL, put it in kiosk mode? Hit the URL, put it in kiosk mode, and people walk up. And I can, I can see one of them from my desk, and I see people out there playing with it all the time. So it's a lot of fun. It's, yeah, it's really hard to see when you're squishing Chrome down like that. Any other questions? So that, t that TV is rotated then? Yes. Mode. Yep, there's two of them. And then we've got, in our dev area, we've got two others. So we've got pillars like that on either end of the, the area. And we've got two more TVs up there. So I'm also working on a, a Angular dashboard for all of our information, which will be backed by Node because I want some real-time data and events. You know how much those 40-inch, 47-inch touchscreens are? No, but I can get you a price. <laughs> They're not cheap. <laughs> They're not cheap. They're like 12, I think. 12,000. 1,200 12, or 15, somewhere around in there. We, we, we'll get you a discount. <laughs> <laughs> Super Chris? I may have to... Am I plugging it? Oh, it should just work. Okay. Cool. So, uh, I don't have... Well, my UI is probably not as impressive as the other stuff you've seen, but I thought I'd show the app that we actually went through and built a feature in both Ember and Angular and uh, how it came out and why we ended up going with Angular. Uh, so I've changed this app a little bit to uh, protect the guilty, so to speak. And this is now a secret thing manager, and you can, uh, you can edit your thing. And then things have rules, and this is the portion of the application where we actually have more of a richer interface. So it's like a Rails app with one screen that kind of needs to be more rich clienty. Um, and so this thing is about putting together um, a hierarchical location rule to say, well, I want to do something if it's in the USA. So we'll add the USA to the, and then not in Miami for some reason. So we want to exclude Miami. So we say include the US, exclude Miami. And the little portion of the app where I knew it had to be kind of rich clienty and I wanted to kind of do, do it in both and see which one I liked is specifically this autocomplete here. So this is actually going out and querying, you know, bunches and much of the things. Fairly simple. So I wanted to be able to pick one and then add it to the list. Oops, I 
did it the wrong way, but that's okay. So, um, like I said, what was really interesting is that it ended up being the exact same lines of code. And I know the, the spike I did was 10 lines of code exactly in both Ember and Angular. But what was interesting and what steered me finally in the Angular direction is how much more I got done in those 10 lines of code because I was able to leverage an existing Angular component to do that dropdown. So that's a Twitter bootstrap type ahead. And what it actually looks like to use that, um, this is Haml, if you haven't seen Haml before, it's just basically a syntax for writing HTML a little bit more concisely. Um, um, pretty easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do something. Like this. Oh, preferences, color scheme. Anybody have one they like? Solarized light. Solarized dark. Can you see it? Good enough. All right. So if I go down to where exactly you're doing that um, market criteria autocomplete, um, so this is an input tag. And so I, I will say one of the things I am probably least a fan of about Angular is the amount of attributes that I end up cramming into the markup. Yeah. Um, I don't really dig that so well. There are ways around that. I've seen directives where instead of a bunch of attributes, they take a single attribute that essentially is get the options from here. And that seems like a much nicer way to go. And maybe I'll like write a directive and refactor this later. But out of the box with Angular, you sometimes end up with, as you can see, a ton of attributes. It's what's, not so what's awesome. What's function called? Which? Um, you know, being able to sort of package attributes. A, direct, direct. a directive. No, I mean, the, you, you said that so, so some so let's look at this directive here, this autocomplete input over here. Uh -huh. And the thing that makes it a Angular directive is I have this type ahead attribute. And Angular picks up on that. It's just a plain old attribute on the markup at the end of the day. And Angular picks up on that and goes, oh, you want me to make this a Twitter bootstrap type ahead field. And here's where to get my data. I'm displaying the market description for every markup, or I'm sorry, every market in the search markets function over here. And uh, what I was saying is sometimes you can condense all these attributes into a single bag of options, but. Uh, that, that's, I, that's what I was asking is how you go about that. But. I'd have to go in and I'd have to show you an example and go look, go look at ng grid. And, and that will, I, I can maybe talk through that later, but that, that will kind of show the example of, of how to do that. But, um, so that search markets function that it binds to for its source is just this guy here. And what was really cool to me was I was able to just totally take my existing Rails backend that was already doing REST and I was able to use the exact same backend completely that I was using for my Ember spike. And I just plugged in an Angular, uh, there's like an Angular Rails resource plugin that I dropped in to use this. And so this market.query, it takes a search parameter, which is just uppercasing the search term that they selected. And because Twitter Bootstrap already knew about promises, this market.query is asynchronous, but it returns what's called a promise. And Twitter Bootstrap knows how to deal with that. And so it just, when it actually returns, does the right thing and actually populates that dropdown. So it was like really, really simple and not much code and made me really happy. Uh, so that's where it does the search part of it. And then the other part of it is, okay, what happens when you actually pick one? And so, I have this type ahead on select. Sorry, that's wrapped. That's a little awkward. Type ahead on select is what tells it, hey, what do I do when there's a selection? And I call the select location function when that happens. Select location just sets the uh, location of the current criterion. And then those plus minus buttons are actually what adds the criteria to the list. And I won't get into all of that. But this is basically the little section that I ended up coding from my little example. 
uh, for my little spike of both Ember and Angular. Um, so, you know, I, I kind of complained about like having too many attributes on the markup, and that's definitely a downside. But the ability to tell Angular where to go and do my templates as pure HTML is actually a, a big plus in my mind. So the, the reason that I really like that is it lets me actually iterate on the original markup that I'm working with our design team to produce. So they produce a mock-up, full fidelity HTML, CSS, and I am able to say, put an Angular component here, put an Angular component here, put an Angular component here, just by adding some attributes or even just some classes to the markup. And uh, we also did a little bit, so the other thing the screen does, uh, as well as like adding your criteria um, one at a time, you can also say, well, that's too much. I want to upload a CSV of their criteria. So hopefully I've, I may have messed this up so it may give me an error here. But oops, let's pick one where I will actually be able to get it to work. So if I upload some zip codes, it will upload the uh, zip code criteria and add them to that list over there. So like the thing that was really awesome about Angular is how easy this was to do. So I've done um, Ajax file uploads before, and it was really difficult and painful to do. But with Angular, I was able to say, hey, this form is doing an Ajax file upload by basically adding a directive tag to it, and it totally did everything else. It added the iframe behind the scenes. It gave me the results into a function on my controller. It was like completely no work at all. And it was really, really cool. I was able to like rock that feature out in like an hour and a half. It was ridiculous. And uh, the level of componentry that the Angular community is building to me is like one of the bigger selling points in my mind. So I probably talked more than my lot of time. Any questions? Is that file upload directive available? Yes. Yeah. NG file upload. NG file upload. Oh yeah. Oh, go to, um, what, what does the component say? ngmodules.org. That's where to find all the stuff. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was just ng file but upload, probably. It's ironic that's not all It is kind of. <laughs> ng upload, sorry. That's what I used to do that, and it was awesome. ngmodules.org, tons and tons of stuff. And also, like, how many times they're getting used. You know, Twelve people use it. That's kind of cool to be able to see. Um, so I dig it. Are you using Angular UI to interact with Bootstrap, or are you just doing it with... Yes, I'm using the Angular UI Twitter Bootstrap directives. That's what I did the type ahead with. Also, very good stuff. Angular UI is a GitHub project. Yeah. It's like it's like nine or ten now projects that wrap up various UI pieces that you can use. AngularUI.github.io. Yeah. So there's a bunch of sub projects here, and UI Bootstrap is one, and then there's a huge list of directives, and Type Ahead is one. So <coughs> that's that's what I mean by the ecosystem. It's just like exploding in terms of the amount of stuff that you can just drop in by adding an attribute to your markup, and for me, it's like so much better. Like it's true of jQuery too. There's a ton of jQuery plugins, but integrating them with your own code base is usually like clunky and awkward and black. But with Angular, using the directives just means, hey, delegate to this little piece of my controller. And I found the integration to be very um, non-disruptive to my code. It plugs in in a, in a clean, um, nice design kind of a way. So. Even more so. Yep. Was that app a single page app or was that mainly Ruby back end? Yeah, this app is largely just a plain old Rails app. The, the screen that's like kind of dynamic and rich clienty is just this one. And that also was a win using Angular versus something like Ember. It was more apparent how <coughs> I would just kind of drop in. <coughs> Have you done any work with like a full scale single page app or 
I've done that in, in Angular. I have not done that in <laughs> Angular, but I think it would work very, very well. And to tell you the truth, we may go in that direction with this app. I expect probably the whole wizard flow we're going through now, where we go from one page to the next, we may end up end up doing that with Angular UI router and views and things like that. Good question for all you guys that demonstrated. Um, one problem I found in some of my experiences, I guess it's not a problem, it's just something that isn't solved out of the box, is when you, you do a single page app, they really promote the idea of routing between different views, but there are cases where you have common elements in your view, like a header and a footer that you might want to share. I know there's a directive ng include. Didn't know if there's anything else that you did as far as like templating common view elements across the different things that you're loading into the respective templates in your routes. If you guys have had that problem to solve or if it really is just this. I mean, the obvious answer is to say, well, you can just make a directive for your header and footer, but right. that's kind of a cop out a little bit from what you're saying. Or you can, can't you do just like a body? Yeah, I, yeah, I think there's like an, I think I saw like an ng footer and an ng header. That's it, there's ng view. Just an ng view. ng view, view. Well, view well, your main you layout. Go and then by the router, view. you could have multiple views on the same page, so you could mm -hmm. put one view to the header, one view to the footer. Um, yeah, so you could have a layout around that already, is what you're saying, just with ng view. Yeah. With ng include. ng include works fine. You could actually solve your problem. Just, well. just was wondering, um, I found myself toggling back and forth between actually processing some of the views, so rather than just serving back uh, static HTML controls and pre-processing some things, whether it was Jay or some other company engine, or Razor or something like that, or just serving it up with views. <coughs> just curious if people had any experience with other things. The, the router, you can actually do your entire template, and then wherever ng view is, that's where all of the HTML can get back. And it should work even if you have the header and footer repeating in every view. It'll just replace the ng view part. Okay. So it should just pull whatever's in the ng view and put it into the ng view that's already loaded on the page and ignore the header and footer. Cool. Should um, also check out UI router. UI router? Yeah. Okay. Which is, yeah, just sort of a router on steroids from the default one, it seems like. And they're planning on eventually switching to that. That's what I saw in like the Angular one two upcoming video. It seemed like they do the, uh, the documentation for that. Oh yeah. yeah. I'm, on, I'm on the team with Karsten and uh, Nate. And they're kind of developers because I, I was new. They're kind of seasoned developers, so I just I'm trying to jump in and do the documentation. But cool. I don't think they're going to merge it, but they are separating out the view component into its own module, so you can not include it. Mm. And, right. And that's, then that's easily it, yeah. use third party really. Yeah, that, that's something that I think the fight between Ember and Angular is definitely around them, like how important are routes. Angular like or Ember starts with routes. Like you can't you can't do anything without starting with like defining your route tree. And Angular is more like bottom up. Something I know. Another really quick comment. Um, I think an interesting piece to touch on or pieces to touch on as you guys consider content for the group would be you, you mentioned use cases. Hear people talk about Ember. I never looked at that, but I looked at Knockout, Backbone, and Angular, and there are specific problems that they solve well. And exactly. Angular lends itself to a lot of problems, but there are areas that it, it may not be the best solution for, depending on the problem you're trying to solve. It might be interesting to point out what those are yeah. as we go through this group. Yeah, for sure. All right. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for coming, everybody. Um, okay, so. Um, I'll uh I'll probably put some notes out on the so go if you're interested still um, we didn't scare you away uh, the Google Plus community is where I'm gonna try to keep everything together um, and then again I'm looking for help kind of organizing everything and then um, once we kind of like figure that stuff out we'll try to put together like you know a first couple maybe just maybe presentations are very easy because there's one person just doing a presentation right and then once we have people kind of coming to those that can kind of morph into okay well let's do a meeting where it's half presentation maybe half hands-on right stuff like that so does that sound cool to everybody try to make it easy on myself all right all right well thanks for coming all right I appreciate it thanks for everybody who showed off their stuff
Thanks for starting this. Yeah, sure.